Welcome to a new video about controller design. This is our example number one about the P controller design. In this example, we will use the frequency response method to design a proportional controller or P controller. You have seen another playlist about the controller design using the root locus method, and that was based on the specifications given in the time domain. We have here also specifications given in the time domain. We will use the specification or parameters in the frequency domain like the phase margin, gain margin or the phase and the gain crossover frequencies. So there will be different uh, approach and we'll also see how we can approach this method. Of course we will do the calculation also verify this in our MATLAB simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the following situation where the problem is the following giving the following feedback system calculate the controller gain k which is a proportional controller such that the overshoot is 12 percent and this is the transfer function of the plant and this is a unity gain feedback configuration and the reference here is the unit step input and the output is given by y so what we do is the following look at the solutions first we calculate the step is the damping ratio from the overshoot the overshoot is 12 percent or 0 0.12 as a scalar value we know the formula for a pure second order system. If this is a second order system, which is not, but with still, we assume it is a second order system. That zeta, which is a damping ratio, can be calculated from this formula. That is also what we have used in the second order system identification videos. When we now substitute the value of that overshoot in scalar format, not as a percentage, you get this 0 0.56 approximately. Okay. Now, we need to evaluate the phase margin using this damping ratio and the phase margin pm is then calculated using this formula arctangent of this quantity in this fraction in this parenthesis so we see the damping ratio already here so when you set up your phase margin equation you see already that you need a damping ratio we have the damping ratio and we can now substitute that value in here that is the only thing we need to insert in this equation and when you do that you will get 56.4 degrees. So what does this phase margin mean? Now, we need to now determine the phase margin frequency, which is the omega pm. Now, for this specific phase margin of 56.4 degrees, there must be a specific uh, radiance or specific frequency. So for that, we need to go and look at the argument or the phase contribution of the loop gain and loop gain is always the complete loop of this feedback system so the argument of that loop loop transfer function l is given by the minus 180 degrees plus the phase margin that means at that frequency i need a minus 180 degrees plus the required phase margin that is the condition what is loop transfer function? As said before, that is really the complete loop you make here. That is the gain times plan, which is shown here. Now in J omega domain, so we convert everything from the S to the J omega. That's shown here. So I replace everything I see in S to J omega. And the unknown here is the K. Okay. And we now determine the phase contribution of this transfer function, the loop transfer function, at the specific frequency. And the condition for the phase is minus 180 degrees plus the phase margin. So this is now calculated, the phase contribution of that one, specifically at that uh, omega pm, which is still an unknown. And that must be then equal to minus 180 degrees plus that 56.4, which is then minus 123.6 degrees. So we need to evaluate the left side of this equation to minus 123.6 degrees. And this is the expression. Now this minus 9 degrees is from this j omega because the phase contribution of the numerator is zero in this case. It's pure real value and it's positive. And we have here the denominator contribution that that's shown here. Okay, now when you solve this, you can solve this uh, using your calculator. You get the omega pm of 0 0.498, almost 0 0.5 radians per second. The next step is in our phase uh, margin calculations is to determine the k value, but then make the loop transfer function, the loop gain, this one, the absolute value of that one at that specific frequency, one. So that means the following. 
So in formula form, you say the loop transfer function must be at that frequency one unity. That is the condition for the phase margin calculations. So that means the following, you get the absolute value of this K over the complete thing in the denominator. You can see that here, it must be one. But we know the phase margin frequency, so we can calculate the K now by substituting the values and then rewrite this, you get K of 2.245. That's now done. So we have now the required k, and that's also what we should do in this example. Now, we need to verify this, so let's look at the simulation results and then specifically the frequency response, the body plot. This is the, uh, the transfer function I said before, and you see the body plot here. And you see here two things. One is the phase margin and the gain margin label. And we, of course, have calculated these two. Let's check that, because this here, the label here is showing the phase, you see here the, the phase margin of 56.4 degrees, as we have calculated. And you see also the at the frequency of 0 0.498 radians per second, also as we have calculated. So this is verified. Now, we move on and I do also the similar thing for the Nyquist plot. So just to make sure that this is indeed correct, the Nyquist plot is shown here. This is again for the loop transfer function L. You see here the label. There are actually two labels, again, gain margin and phase margin, but we are now focusing on the phase margin specifically. You see again here the phase margin of 56.4 degrees and also the phase margin frequency of 0 0.498 radians per second. So everything is there correct. Okay. Now moving on to the transfer response, which is what we actually also need to check because that's the 12% uh, in the transient response. And that's shown here, the unit step response. You see here 114 which is smaller than 12%. So that is indeed according to the specifications and there are more specifications just to give you more data from this uh, response like the rise time, settling time and the final value. But we have achieved our goal. We have our overshoot which is less than 12% and we have calculated also the required gain for that which is 2.245. This is our example number one about the proportional controller design using the frequency response based on the phase margin and the phase margin crossover frequency. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. In the next example, we will discuss the other control types like the PI, PID, etc. So, see you next time and take care.